I'm not going to pay. I don't have to pay. No, That's I'm, the thing. People no, think no, no, I have no, to no, pay. No, I no. don't. No, no, no. What I'm saying is if the court said you need to pay. I don't care pay. what the court says. I'm not paying. That's why I didn't go to court. She told me come to court. She gave me a date. I'm busy. I don't have time for Bonang, dog. I tapped it on Twitter today. I said, Bonang. I don't have time for <laughs> delusional woman. Bonang is a delusional <laughs> woman. Rhea, right? There's a YouTube comment that reads as follows. The boy is still young. The boy is still arrogant. He has no idea how court orders work. Please educate this boy. Now, I want you to understand one thing. This video is not about educating Ria. He's been advised. He's gotten information. He's been in this turf for more than a year. The point of this video is to use Ria and Bonang's case story as a case study for us to actually see what we can learn, particularly as YouTubers, as content creators, but also as consumers, because one day you may be in a predicament where this information could be useful. That's why in addition to just talking about it and showing you a video, I have an interview with attorneys that will basically give us a legal opinion regarding this matter, so stick around. <laughs> Nota spoke about it. Nota pointed out in his interview with the boys Ria and Blackstaff on their podcast that it's just Ria's first lawsuit. You know, at the time, Ria was like, yo, I got just one lawsuit and I'm done. Right? And Nota was like, no, you got one lawsuit and you became famous. At, at what point are you going to like stop though? Because I got it's one not about lawsuit stopping. and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Because I got it's one about lawsuit stopping. and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got one lawsuit and you were like, I'm famous. <laughs> no, I didn't. It's not that you're done. No, no you're I not didn't. Done. You're not done. You're not done. Trust he me. He was like, guys, I'm, I'm not. here. And, and that lawsuit has worn off now. I'm here. <laughs> I'm you, need, you need to catch another one. <laughs> no, I don't. No, no I trust don't. Okay, well, I think Nota's words may just be ringing true because after watching their podcast, I've come to a few conclusions of my own or at least assumptions or my take, my opinion perhaps it's time to share it. As Abraham Lincoln said, I learn from everyone, even if it's what not to do. So we're gonna basically decipher the implications around the decision to speak ill of someone else on a public platform, no matter the size, because the internet, you can't project how many people will end up seeing that message. You can't actually tell and basically assume that it's just gonna end with your narrative being heard by a small audience, right? We are in this content space to reach as many people as possible. So I think it's very, very important that Rhea basically recognizes the need to actually sit down, breathe, think about the situation, and basically assess everything. Assess everything. Let's get straight into the nitty gritty. My name is Rea Tlhino Khopani. I'm a 22-year-old podcaster on the Rea and Black Steph podcast. Rhea Khopani is a co-founder of Everything SA Music, SM for short. But yes, before we get into that, maybe we should like introduce ourselves because people are wondering who the hell are these two guys now? <laughs> if you don't know our voice by now, you're sleeping on yeah, us. Yeah, basically we've done the interviews. Um, so I'm a con I'm a co-founder here at Everything SA Music. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, yeah. My business is around content. So I'm a content producer, content creator and a content curator. Uh, I'm just black stuff, you know, I'm just that <laughs> guy, you know. The channel joined the YouTube platform on the 21st of August 2020. And since then it has garnered over 900,000 views as at the time of this recording. 10 months ago, Rhea and Black Steff incorporated the element of podcasting into their channel. Yo people, welcome to it. We are officially here. This is the Rhea and Black Steph podcast right here on Everything SA Music. Steph, we here, baby. Yo! <laughs> and as at the date of this recording, they are sitting on episode 38. Now, the story that has caused this video to crop up, the one you are watching right now, is episode 4, which has since been deleted because of all the controversy that it's showed. Let's get back to what I was saying. We know AKA, bro. Let's not hide from the truth. What is the truth? Doc Scoop told us, bro. What did he tell us? Because boss, you wanna Scoop bring it up. Scoop told us that 
Some of you may not know the history in relation to this case of Bonang versus Riahopan. But in essence, a short synopsis is that Ria accused Bonang of having introduced AKA to drugs. He claimed that he was told by Scoop Makatini, right? And unfortunately, such things serve as allegations that can call for a defamation of character. So Bonang then instituted legal action against Ria Hopane. Ria was then requested to basically detract his statements to serve a public apology on most of the social media platforms and to basically desist from speaking ill of Bonang in terms of the subject matter on his platform. As stated in my previous retraction and apology to Ms. Bonang Matera, um, I would like to sincerely apologize to everybody that was mentioned in the podcast on the 9th of May in 2021. Um, I am deeply regretful of what I said and I now realize the harm that our podcast could, could cause and um, I've learned from my mistake and I will definitely look to improve on my content going forward. The people that I would like to specifically apologize to is Ms. Bonang Mateva, Sia Bongang which is Kuk Makatini, and then lastly, AKA, which is Mr. Keenan Forbes. Right, now let's talk about the platform itself. Ria is a podcaster. I just want to make sure that um, we push the envelope forward in terms of providing content for the entertainment industry. I never want to um, be negative and spew negative information. And the YouTube channel in and of itself focuses on music. That's why the name is Everything SA Music. It focuses on music and now through the podcasting element, it serves for them to get a platform where they voice, voice some opinions. They analytically um, look at the music that has come out. They speak to the music that has come out. They share their opinion about it. They criticize where they need to criticize. Yeah. So what are we here to do though? I mean, we're here to talk about the South African music game. We're here to cover the latest news. We're here to talk about the latest talking points, review albums, review singles. You know, we're just here to create content for you guys are surrounding the South African music game. I'm and they also build and promote where they need to promote, right? I just want to make sure that we build together and everything that I do or say, everybody that I interview, I leave them with a bit of um, a lot of positivity. So I'm really sorry and I hope everybody can forgive me and um, I'll make sure I do the right thing going forward. In the long term, their goal is to form a business around their YouTube channel. It's a sustainable business at that, right? But unfortunately, the way that things are going at this point in time, they have chosen a route that focuses largely on controversy and spotlight and trending and increasing the number of followers. Not knowing that it's being genuine that causes followers to be retained and stay and actually want to follow more of your content. Unless if all they want is that entertainment and unless if all they want is to continue to be running behind you so that they hear you speak ill about other people because at the end of the day negativity does thrive and trump positivity let us now take it back further what triggered Ria to speak about aka's alleged drug addiction and the introduction of Bonang regarding this drug addiction is basically what had happened to um, AKA's fiance, the passing of Ms. Tembe, and the allegations that were already roaming around and the opinions that people had around whose fault was it. They just took it a notch up and went into a dangerous territory from a legal perspective, right? So the 500,000 thing then died down, died down a bit. It died down a bit but not long enough because Bonang returned from the States and the first thing that she wanted to do was set things straight. So she then put in legal and court applications and basically roped Ria in via a social media platform called Twitter. And on that social media platform, she simply said, good luck. 
then the response from Rhea was that I don't need the luck, right? And well, Bonang is delusional and I, I don't have time for delusional women. It's back to business and things like that. There are other channels that have covered the story in more depth, going from when it started to how the situation is now. This channel, you know how it is, it's to empower, it's for us to look at certain elements, critically analyze certain elements and see whether we can bring a different vantage point and basically bring tools and opinions and share some knowledge that can basically assist us, particularly content creators in this volatile space called YouTube. And if YouTube is working, then it means that people have ideas of building other social media platforms like YouTube that may thrive in future. But before you blow up on such platforms, know and, and understand the territory that you are entering and the territory that you'll be working in and basically winning in because we all want this platform to win so that it benefits each and every one of us. Just a quick disclaimer. I have essentially compressed the hour legal opinion discussion into just 12 minutes for the sake of not making this video longer than it needs to be. But for convenience and as a favor to myself and your good selves, I will place a card right here that will send you to the full interview so that you get and grasp the full context because Ritumet is pretty informed and prior to him giving just a straightforward answer, he needs to give us the legal context around it, which is what good lawyers do. So do me that favor, particularly if you are in the content creator space. My name is Mpo Matipi. I am the founder and owner of M Matipi Incorporated Attorneys. Um, we are based in Galaga. Um, Galaga Business Exchange is the name of the office park. That's in Midrand, uh, right? in, Yes, it's in Midrand. And we specialize in divorce, custody, matrimonial law, maintenance, litigation, bail application, wills and estate, uh, medical negligence, convincing and commercial. Oh, that, so, that's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah. Apart from other things. So, um, I have an amazing team and one of the best people I work with is Ritu Meti. Ah, no, super, super. We are super honored. Thank you, basically. You heard starters. If you need any type of legal service and assistance, they are here to basically advise you, counsel you, and lead the way for you, right? Uh, Ritu Meti, now I want us to jump into basically the gist of it because as attorneys, you guys are busy you know, time is money, as they say. And as a young startup, you'll understand it more than anybody else, correct? So now you've told us about the different types of services you provide, and now we are jumping into the digital media space, right? Uh, and in jumping into that, one of the key things that's always at the forefront, especially for podcasters, YouTubers, anyone in the social media space, is they are running to the world to the word allegedly every time they want to say something that they otherwise would be afraid to say. So what power does this word allegedly actually mean? And does it basically absolve me if I were to use this word before I say something that I otherwise wouldn't say without that word allegedly in front of it? Just to answer your question, putting allegedly in front of any statement, basically you are making a non-statement in the sense that you are perpetuating something that does not have proof. And you are saying, I do not know whether this thing is true or not. So you're not stating it to be a fact, you mm, understand? Mm. So, so, so in layman's yeah. terms, does that mean that uh, I, I, I then get away with, with yes, saying you, that? Mm. You do, you do, but okay. ultimately it's a non-statement and I'd like mm. to just drive that point home. You now maybe let's just jump into the case in point, right? Yes. The reason why I needed your advice in the first place. Yeah. Um, with now what happened yes. is the issue of her winning and a judgment coming against the Rhea, right? First yes. and foremost, Rhea didn't go, didn't go to, to court. So Rhea didn't attend court. That's the first thing. So yeah. maybe just share the implications of that because I'm interested to know 
if he had gone to court, was his presence going to have an impact on the overall judgment had he yeah. gone to court um, okay. versus not going to court? And I'll give you a straightforward forward answer. Yes, it, it, it would have impacted his, sorry, it would have impacted the overall judgment in the sense that mm. one, you would have had a defense entered in, meaning that mm. you would have the other side of the story. Yes, his presence would have had a different outcome, if I mm. can boldly put it that way. It would have totally altered the amount claimed, one, that's okay. one example, mm. or it would have just been chucked out on whatever reason or whatever defense he may have offered you understand mm. so, mm. so so in essence he, he shot himself in the foot in a way yes now let's look at the other side of the coin now in the sense that judgment was granted yes. he, he basically has to pay three hundred thousand towards bonang over and above that he also has to cover the legal fees Sabonang, right yes but he is having a bravado attitude and saying that, number one, he won't pay. So I'd like for you, number one, to touch on that, ne? but indulge me yeah. a bit. So number one, he won't pay. Number yeah. two, what are the consequences? Should he continue with defamatory action against Bonang, like continue to speak ill of Bonang on, on public platforms? And then yeah. the third thing which he highlighted is that um, he can't be arrested for, for, for defamation of character, uh, right? But yeah. there's the other side now of contempt of court if he doesn't pay. So maybe touch on those three elements for me. No one is above the law. We've seen it with uh, our former president, Jacob Zuma, who was sent mm -hmm. to prison for contempt of court. We've seen it with various other powerful uh, people in government. No one is above the law. The law mm. is there to enforce order, right? So mm. the whole attitude of I will not show up, the bravado, that's just by the wayside. You will mm. show up, fam. You will account for your actions. You will be held accountable, right? When he says he won't pay, here's another uh, reality check. Mm. And um, the fact is that you need to be aware of how the law operates if you're going to make these bold statements. And mm. quite frankly, I don't think our friend is getting the proper legal advice. Uh, and, and that's just an assumption. Allegedly, I can just... <laughs> <laughs> you are allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> but in essence, you will pay. Mm. The wheels of justice turn slowly, but they do turn, and you will pay. And he's right by saying he won't go to prison. Uh, you do not get arrested for um, in a, a in a civil, civil case. Court, yeah, yeah, in a civil case, in a civil uh, court order, it mm. does not make provision for arrest. But in making sure that you pay up, we then move to the sheriff. Uh, you take your court order along with instructions to the sheriff to say this was granted in my favor and mm. this is the amount. Sheriff, can you go and attach property in this amount? You know, so then what happens is that uh, you get the sheriff to go and enforce the court order or the court judgment, you see. And if I have nothing to attach, as he alleges, so because I think thing, that's where his confidence comes in yeah. to say, well, I don't have any assets, you know, you guys can, you know, whatever. I, I, I have nothing. Yeah. So what, through thin air, you're going to get this money? Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's put it this way. And this is free legal advice now. How long do you think a court judgment stays in force? Um, it takes 30 years. So if our friend is in his 20s, and, you know, God willing, he lives long, you know, longer mm. years and makes it to 50. By 49, we'll come for that McLaren. 
Mm. Yeah. So mm. it hangs. It still hangs. So in mm. essence, you might not pay today, but each dog has its day. Mm. Yeah. Now just uh, uh, to throw a spanner in the works, because you know Twitter lawyers. Like, there's you guys, and then there's yeah. Twitter lawyers. So Twitter <laughs> lawyers. LLP Twitter. LLP Twitter, you know, and, yeah. and they, they, are, they are pushing the narrative to say that, okay, fine, you are acting tough and you're saying that you won't pay. But by mm-hmm. not paying, you are in contempt of court. So that's where now the thin line that I want us to address there, is it just the judgment going to wait there and until that 29th years, 30 years? Or can actually he be arrested for contempt of court and he actually goes to prison? Because that's the one element that Twitter LLB is or LLB Twitter is pushing. Thank God there's no um, you, yeah, degrees issued by Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> the legal, the legal uh, assessment is flawed. Mm. Um, so remember in, 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 in our scenario, we have a situation where the young man has been ordered to make payment. Now, it shifts from the court to the sheriff. You understand? So it's Mm. it's a matter of admin, not necessarily Mm. a legal legal matter. So Mm. if, if, if for some or any other reason, we can then show that he's deliberately moving assets or hiding assets, that's a different ball game to get all together. Mm, but mm, in, in, mm. In, in essence, when you just say, I won't pay, the sheriff will come and knock at your door. Mm, so mm. if you say you won't pay versus actively, you know, hiding assets, actively uh, misleading, and that would be contempt in that sense. Does that 300K now accrue interest up until the point of payment or will it still be 300K given, you know, how the time value of money works? That's a good question, actually. So if judgment is granted at 7%, Mm. it will be 7% up until date of final payment. So there Mm. is interest that accrues. The longer you take to pay, firm, the more money you will end up paying. You understand? Mm. So can he be arrested? Unfortunately, in civil matters or in a civil mm. judgment, mm. one may not necessarily be arrested. Now, I did the lawyer thing. What does may mm. not necessarily be? Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there would have to be a set of facts where we prove that so and so is uh, factually moving assets uh, or he's hiding certain assets or he's being fraudulent. So, It'll so anything be, in addition to that? Yes, basically. in addition to oh. it. It might not necessarily flow from the civil judgment itself, but mm. if I do have a demand against you and I can show to an extent that you are being fraudulent, mm. fraud is you know a legal um, crime. Sorry, it's a, it's, a, it's a, wait for it, it's a criminal crime. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Some people watching this may actually wonder as to why I didn't go in depth in terms of Bonang's side of things. This video was about the actions of a content creator that got him into trouble and we are taking lessons from that, right? The fact that Bonang came for him and the different and varying opinions around whether she should have, whether she's fallen off, whether she picked an easy target those things have no factual relevance in this case but in this case there is the issue of money and a court judgment that has come out and the lessons that we can draw from the mistakes that have been derived derived from the actions of Rhea. So the first lesson is this understand the working environment that you are in As content creators, we are of the take that we have a leeway based on our right to freedom of speech. But it doesn't work like that because any right that you have must not infringe on the rights of others. This is something that all content creators must know, all content creators must recognize because there's nothing more powerful than the tongue, right? Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler basically 
turn the whole country against a particular culture, tribe, um, a belief system, right? He basically did that through his tongue. So the power of a voice is not something that we must take for granted. It's actually something that we must respect and basically honor in the process, right? So know your working environment, know the limitations, know the conditions that come with you being on a public platform, know how much influence you have, or at least how much influence can be assumed that you have, because sometimes it's just a matter of perception. So as content creators, we must recognize the power in the formats and portals and forums and platforms that we are on. Lesson number two, don't try and act smart when you are not an expert in a particular field. This is why I have not Paul on the show, because I am no legal expert, right? I can have my opinion around the entire situation. I can try and grasp and extrapolate certain things from the situation, but I am not privy to the laws of this country, especially entertainment law right especially civil cases i know nothing about that so don't try and be smart and act arrogant when you've done just a few consultations right rather have paid consultations and then when you have those paid consultations take the advice that is being offered to you Ria was adamant that they did highlight the seriousness of the case but at the end of the day he still didn't take it serious doesn't give a fuck. You have too many people that are gonna be like, yo, why are you doing this? I mean, no one, people, everybody know. Last year, there was like one person you could like influence to do, to influence me to say or do something. This year, there's nobody, bro. Mm. Everything that I'm saying is straight off the, off the heart. Off the dome. <laughs> it's off the mm. dome, you know what I mean? There's no one who's gonna control me. There's no one who's gonna say, and that's, that's what I've always wanted to be. If you guys realize it, I've always wanted to get to that point, though, where I can say whatever I want, whenever I want and deal with the consequences myself. I've dealt with the consequences myself, bro. People, dog, like my own family, dog, when this whole thing was going on, they were like trying to get me lawyers and all this stuff. And now they're just like, yo, we're going to let... So did you have gonna lawyers? Let... No, I mean, like I spoke to, I consulted. I didn't have them like... And what did they time. tell you? Did... Like, I'm not going to get into that because... Did they tell you, it's, you know, when you're about to like a doctor, ah, my boy, you have three months. <laughs> nah, nah. It, it's I mean, they were trying boy, to act time. like it's something serious, but I knew that is nothing. Dog, what? Like, Nigga, lawyers are telling no, you it's but, serious. But, but, I know but it's not, because they don't know the position that I'm in. No, but you they don't know. That's your lawyer. You he, he's in your side. But he, does, he, he doesn't have a hundred percent. He doesn't know that. Okay. Actually, did nah, you guys I mean, be, did you guys? Right? Which is pretty sad. So know under, and understand the environment that you're working in and don't be smart around some of the things you say and the decisions that you make. Lesson number three, be yourself and don't try to emulate somebody else's working strategy, right? As people in the podcasting space, there's a trend. People look at the controversy that has come around McG and his podcast and how that catapulted his podcast way up, right? And there's no there's no basically stop to it at this point in time. The trajectory is up. There's no time for them to plateau at this point in time, right? But they are a comedy at the same time, informative sort of pl platform, right? It's an urban uh, podcast. They are there to inform us, to enlighten us and to make us laugh so that we enjoy the content and forget all about our issues, right? But as a podcaster, stick in your own lane. Their podcast is about music. Yes, the entertainment industry, but their channel is everything SA music, right? So why not just stick to that specific area of music, right? Review the music, talk about people's catalogs, talk about people's influence and impact within the in entertainment industry, right? Work on those things that will build your channel. Don't try to expedite the process in such a way that you start losing yourself within the process. It's not about controversy. You know, I like that type of stuff. In the, you, even though I'm a fan of Kanye West, I love so Kanye So you just West. like to be, a, you just like to see the world burn. Exactly. I'm one of those people. For what? If the roof is, if it's not burning. If the roof is on fire, then let that motherfucker burn. If it's on. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that you need to learn also, 
as they are now monetizing their channel, right? The CPM element also counts, right? The higher the CPM, the higher the revenue that AdSense will give you them for the adverts that were advertised on their channel through each and every platform that is advertised, granted, right? But unfortunately, things like politics, things like controversy, things like nudity and such, those get a smaller CPM. Therefore, the revenue they generate will be smaller. Whereas music as an industry is an all season industry. So if they stick specifically to what they do, they find better ways of growing it by adding value, right? Not just through controversy, but adding value in such a way that people who are watching get to learn and enjoy the content in the long run. It's not just a matter of po posting the podcast today and then using basically that sound bite to make it trend. And then there's no evergreen element that comes to it. If you look at some of the videos that I've done, right? I've in some videos taken trendy topics, trendy individuals and use the strategy of paint jacking. But unlike other channels, I found a way to use my critical thinking ability to basically add my voice to YouTube, right? speak about the people but extrapolate the good in what they do so that the next person who tries to learn from them can actually also learn all that is good that they do lesson number four women should be treated like kid loves guys right anything that you say about a woman should you basically have to be careful about it it's a season for us to empower women and rumors at the end of the day because that's what we take it as scoop told us scoop told us only you know that scoop told you right you and your co-hosts know that and it may be true that they, you guys have been told but at the end of the day what rings true now is that you also owe bonang three hundred thousand. over and above that the legal fees also have to be covered right and then when they try more and more to chase after you for the funds and so on that will only add to the cost it will only escalate and go higher and higher and higher so just be careful around that particular aspect look at women and treat them with kid gloves because we're in a country and basically the world as a whole has looked down on women and their role in society and so Bonang is a woman who's made a mark for herself and she can't allow just that smaller Nyana statement that is made to ruin her reputation and her career. Whether it's true or not, that's a different story. It's about now the perception that comes from the truth that is presented at the end of the day. In addition, I thought I should actually just throw this one in there. Be careful the type of people that you have around you. You don't want yes men. You don't want people who don't actually tell you off when you do wrong. After watching that podcast episode, their last one, I actually saw that Steph was trying to knock some sense into Rhea, but he wasn't hearing him. And he was trying to follow and be emotional and be somewhat childish and outlandish with his approach and actually be someone who was presenting himself to be tougher than he actually is. At least that's what I think. I think he's just acting tougher than he actually is. But have people around you that are actually going to be people that lift you up as you guys rise because the potential for this podcast is actually high. The potential is there. They just need to make sure that they utilize their potential and throw it in the right direction, not through bashing, not through extreme criticism, not through pulling and putting people down, but rather uplifting people. Talk about people in such a way that you give kudos as you've basically done in previous episodes where you were picking up certain albums, certain artists and push that agenda, push positivity, push the way forward and actually address the social ills while you're at it so that your social impact is also up there with the rest of the channels of your caliber and your league and that are growing at a rate that you are growing on or in so that there's greater impact at the end of the day. Then lesson number five, which will be the closing lesson, is that let's support channels so that they don't need to go the route of controversy, but rather the route of creating value for the people who are watching. Let's support them in one way or another. The simple way to support a YouTube channel, and it costs nothing, is to like their video, 
I mean, if you watch a video till the end, right? The like doesn't necessarily speak to you liking everything that I've said, but rather liking the content. In other words, the way I approached the content that I'm bringing in front of your eyes right now for you to enjoy and consume, right? And then when you subscribe, it means that when trendy topics come up, then my voice will be a voice that you want to hear, right? When financial matters come up, when you need a bit of motivation, when you need a channel that discusses real issues from a perspective of mental capacity and intellectual breakdown, right? Then you know that you are subscribing to a channel that will be there to coach and mentor you through the process of life as we build together. So lesson number five, also culminates in me saying like subscribe press the notification bell and if you feel there's value on this channel kindly share it as well i hope you also enjoyed the interview and the legal breakdown as well go support mpo uh, matepe inc attorneys and then let's see how we can grow grow and empower each other as we progress as well either way remember it starts with you cheers guys um, that one, that one. That that's one, that's one the other question is like, like, for sure. For me, it's like, as long as it doesn't like affect us business wise, like, it's, for me, it's like literally, like, it's whatever. It's they, whatever. But yeah, dog, it's like, um, I feel like that's, that's a rap on Banang. Yeah. She, she's definitely not getting that money. Um, <sighs> she's obsessed with me. Um, everything you say, music is not going anywhere. Yeah. Of course, it's easy for me with this small channel, this empowerment channel, this channel that wants to make a difference. It's easy for me to basically use people as case studies for us to learn and grow, right? One can argue, what right do I have? Who do I think I am? I'm just a nobody who thinks that whatever is in my mind can basically travel via osmosis, telepathic osmosis at that, and basically be embedded in your brain so that whatever lessons we share, we can then grow from them. This is not me targeting your Rhea Hopanes and other people whom I've used as case studies on this channel. It's just for us to be empowered in one way or another. And besides, the channel can be small now. You don't know what can happen in the next five months, right? Now I'm almost at 600 subscribers. I could be at 6,000 subscribers in the next six months and 600,000 subscribers in the next year two years three years so let me have this voice allow me to basically give an opinion around it despite the size of my channel right now it basically came as a surprise when bonang uh, basically wished ria hopane luck in relation to the defamatory case that was lurking and looming right but Ria responded in a way that I wouldn't have personally responded. I would be shaking in my boots. I would be regretting. And I would make sure that I don't make the same mistake twice. Right? I wouldn't be arrogant about it. Again, it's my personal opinion. That's what I picked up. And not being a, an expert on psychology and human behavior... But at the end of the day, we all know arrogance when we see it. If it quacks like a duck, sounds like a duck, then it probably is a duck, right? Now you're sounding a little bit she, delusional. She's a gay. <laughs>